this video we will uh, learn about the extent of urban and rural poverty what was the adverse effect of the british rule in india and what is the role of agriculture in the poverty the number of poor in india when the number of poor is estimated as the proportion of people below the poverty line it is known as head count ratio in other words head count ratio is calculated by dividing the number of people below the poverty line by the total population the official data on poverty is made available to the public by the planning commission it is estimated on the basis of consumption expenditure data collected by the nsso that is national sample survey organization on this basis comparable estimates of poverty are available at national and state levels from 1973 to 74 to 2004 to 5 see in the table the level of population below poverty line is decreasing significantly both in urban and rural areas number and proportion of people below poverty line number of people below poverty line as you can see that in 1973 to 74 321.3 million people were below the poverty line and in 2004 to 5 this number came down to 238.5 million now the proportion of people below poverty line in terms of proportion we can say that in 73 to 74 54.9% of the total population was below the poverty line and in 2004 to 5 it has fallen to 21.8% so from 1973 to 74 to 2004 to 5 there has been a considerable decline in the number of poor and their proportion but the nature of decline in the two parameters is not encouraging the ratio is declining much slower than the absolute number of poor in the country now we come to the extent of urban and rural poverty in 1972 to 74 81.33% of the poor resided in rural areas which declined to 71.40% in 2004 to 5 it means 3 fourths of the poor in india still reside in villages also poverty which was prevailing predominantly in rural areas has shifted to urban areas in the 1990s the absolute number of poor in rural areas had declined whereas the number of their urban counterparts increased marginally. The poverty ratio declined continuously for both urban and rural areas. The gap between the absolute number of poor in rural and urban areas did not narrow down until the early 1990s. Whereas in the case of ratio, the gap has remained the same until 2004 to 5. Now we come to the state level trends in poverty. The state level trends in poverty are shown in the table as you can see in the table. Five states that is Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal and Urissa account for about 70% of India's poor. During 1973 to 74 about Half of the population as most of these last states are living below the poverty line. West Bengal, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat showed a remarkable progress. Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh performed reasonably well in reducing people below the poverty line. All these points we can identify by seeing the table that what is happening in all the state in between 1973 to 74 till 2004 to 5. British rule adverse effect of living standard of Indians. There is no doubt that British rule had a substantial negative impact on the Indian economy and standard of living of the people. British government systematically destroyed Indian industries. Their primary motive behind the deindustrialization was twofold. First is to get raw materials like cotton, jute, etc. from India at cheap rates to be used by upcoming modern industries in Britain. And second is to sell finished products like cotton cloth of British industries to Indian market at higher prices. Next point is that more than 70% of Indians were engaged in agriculture throughout the British Raj period. 
British policies raised ruler taxes, which enabled merchants and moneylenders to become large landowners. Next point is that that under the British rule, Indian began to export food grains. It was responsible for frequent famines, and as many as twenty six million people died in famines between eighteen seventy five and nineteen hundred. In short, we can say that British Raj made miserable conditions of people in India. Their main goal was to provide a market for British exports, to have India service its debt payments to Britain, and for India to provide manpower for the British Imperial armies. Next, we come to the agriculture, which is still the principal means of livelihood. In India, agriculture is still the principal means of livelihood. and land is the primary asset of ruler people the ownership of land is an important determinant of material well-being and those who own some land have better living conditions low success rate of land ceding since independence the government has opted to redistribute land through land ceding land ceding refers to fixing the specified limit of land which could be owned by an individual beyond the specified limit all lands belonging to a particular person would be taken over by the government and will be allotted to the landless cultivators and small farmers however this move was successful only to a limited extent because large section of agriculture workers were not able to farm the small holdings due to lack of money or skills and land holdings were too small to be viable Next point is majority of small and marginal farmers. A large section of the ruler poor in India are the small farmers. The land that they have is generally less fertile and dependent on rains. Their survival depends on subsistence crops like wheat and sometimes on livestock. Subsistence agriculture is self-sufficiency farming in which the farmer focus on growing enough food. to feed themselves and their families next point is uh, fragmentation of land holdings with the rapid growth of population and without alternative sources of employment the per head availability of land for cultivation has steadily declined it has led to fragmentation of land holdings the income from these small land holdings is not sufficient to meet the family's basic requirement it had led to distress among the farmers now what is distress among farmers that is high production cost low and unstable yields decline in world prices global surplus in production due to subsidies by foreign countries and opening up of the domestic market due to globalization has increased the exposure of farmers and led to agrarian distress and suicides in view of the large magnitude and serious nature of the problems of poverty in india it is important to analyze the cause of poverty in the country poverty cannot be attributed to any single cause or a single set of causes it is a complex phenomenon and is the outcome of the interaction of diverse economic and non economic factors thank you for watching edupedia world videos